The next item of business is a statement by Fergus Ewing on the repatriation of convergence funds owed to Scottish farming. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Fergus Ewing for up to nine minutes, please. Uh, Presiding Officer, this Government, with the support of this Parliament, has been campaigning for many years for the repatriation of the EU convergence funds owed to Scottish farming. We have been united in our endeavour to achieve this, and I want to thank all of you across all parties for your support and efforts. There have, of course, been developments since this issue was last discussed in the Chamber, and therefore I want to update you on those. First, I thought it would be helpful to set out the circumstances and history behind this issue. In 2013, the EU announced that a process of external conversions should occur between member states as it considered that historic allocations of cap supported based on production levels in the 1990s and early 2000s were no longer meeting the objectives for farming and food production. As such, any member state whose average direct payment rate was less than 90% the 90, the 90 of the EU average in 2013 would be awarded a convergence uplift to take them to at least 196 euros per hectare by 2020. Now, England, Wales and Northern Ireland were each on average already above the 90% EU average convergence threshold in 2013. However, direct payments in Scotland were significantly lower, presiding officer, on average at 130 euros per hectare and indeed were low enough to pull the overall UK rate below the convergence threshold. As a result of Scotland's low payment rate, the UK was awarded an uplift of 223 million euros of additional CAP funding to cover the 214 to 220 period. Despite the EU's rationale for convergence funding to narrow the payment gap across the UK, the UK government chose to distribute the money across the UK administrations based on the historic allocations formulae used for all other CAP money allocations. This meant that Scotland only received 16.3% of the uplift, despite being the only part of the UK on average below the EU's convergence threshold. Presiding officer, there's no doubt that this was neither equitable nor within the spirit of the EU's aims for convergence. This government tried to prevent it from happening. My predecessor, Richard Lockhead, corresponded furiously with his UK government counterparts. This parliament agreed unanimously to support the case for repatriation of convergence funding, all to little avail. The UK government would not budge. On being appointed Rural Economy Secretary, I took up the cudgels and was determined, frankly, not to lay them down again until every avenue, presiding officer, had been explored and every effort made to win Scotland's case. I brought the issue back to Parliament to secure, once again, the ongoing support across the Chamber in October 2017. And in addition, I engaged stakeholders, including NFU Scotland, Scottish Tenant Farmers Association, Scottish Land and Estates, the Scottish Beef Association, the National Sheep Association in Scotland, and the Scottish Crofters Federation. They all agreed to work in partnership with us to press the case with the UK government, and they did so. And I want to thank them all for helping to keep this matter firmly at the forefront of UK ministers' minds. The UK government might have imagined that this issue would fade away with the pros prospect of Brexit, but if anything, presiding officer, that only served to underscore the urgency of the matter and indeed the necessity of resolving it. Therefore, I determined to raise this and raise this at every opportunity with the then DEFRA secretary, Michael Gove. And whilst I suspect I may simply have worn him down, presiding officer, uh, I must in fairness convey my gratitude to him for finally agreeing in late 2017 to conduct a review. We might not have got ultimately the terms of reference we wanted with a focus solely on future funding allocations, a change in the planned terms of reference, which I understand was made at the behest of the UK Treasury. But under the chairmanship of Lord Bew, there has been a review undertaken. And I want to thank, firstly, the Scottish Government officials for their input to making Scotland's case robustly to the panel 
And secondly, I want to thank Scotland's representative on the BU panel, Jim Walker, for his sterling efforts on behalf of Scottish farming and for all the time he has devoted to it. Jim has ensured that Scotland's case and voice has been heard and he's uh, applied himself to the task asked of him with customary gusto and tenacity. Frankly, we couldn't have asked for more. Now, I understand the review has reached its conclusions and I look forward to those being published. I do hope that the review panel has accepted Scotland's case as both substantial and compelling. Presiding officer, support has come from perhaps surprising quarters in recent times. Many may have been surprised by Boris Johnson in his campaign to be elected to lead the Conservative Party unequivocally promise to pay out the additional funding to Scottish farming in 2020 and again in 2021. And whilst, presiding officer, I don't intend to make a habit of it, I'm happy on this singular occasion to say I agree with the Prime Minister that we must make sure that Scotland's farmers get the support that they are owed. Where I would disagree with him is the idea that this historic injustice, to use the phrase that he deployed, was as a result of the CAP. Presiding officer, the historic injustice was caused entirely by his predecessor government. Now, what matters at this point is that he is willing to put matters right, and therefore I welcome his further pledge given to an SNP MP in the House of Commons Chamber so to do. What concerns me is that subsequent exchanges with DEFRA and by my colleague Derek Mackay with the Treasury have not confirmed that the £160 million Scotland is owed will be transferred. So my intention today, Presiding Officer, is to encourage this Parliament once again to unite in calling on the Prime Minister to make good his promise and to do so swiftly. Further, I hope I can secure support in affirming, as we did in a debate earlier this year, that agriculture is a devolved competence. It's a policy responsibility we have been dealing with for two decades now. And that we send a very clear message to the Prime Minister, to DEFRA and the Treasury, and to anyone else in the UK government who needs to hear that message. That if we do receive the £160 million owed to Scottish farming, and indeed future allocations as pledged, that all the funding comes and comes without strings. There can be no attempt to bind or determine the way in which the funding is to be used or disseminated. That, presiding officer, is this Parliament's responsibility. But I want to reassure members on this government's intentions should we receive what we have been promised. And I can announce today that I've secured the agreement of my colleague Derek Mackay, the Finance Secretary, that all additional convergence fund funding received will be ring-fenced for agriculture. That, uh, that is only right and proper, given its origins and its purpose. That is what this government will do. Now, I understand that people want to get on with spending this funding, but I would caution that we have yet to receive uh, any funding, and you can't spend, presenting officer, warm words. But today, I hope we can come together as a parliament and focus on the final part of this uh, six-year-long campaign to ensure its success and delivery of the funding owed to Scottish farming. In doing so, presenting officer, uh, and in moving towards closing, I would offer the reflection that this parliament is often at its best when it can act together and support with one voice a campaign to repatriate money that plainly is in the interests of our farmers and our crofters who face very real and pressing challenges in the short and medium term, as all of us know. Therefore, presiding officer, I urge all colleagues in all parties to use their opportunity today to reaffirm their party's support for the repatriation of the convergence funding owed to Scottish farming in the hope and belief that our collective efforts will shortly result in success. Scotland's farmers and crofters deserve no less. Uh, thank you. Mr Ewing, the Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. And I can allow around 18 minutes, very prescriptive today, 18 minutes for questions. And then we'll move on. Uh, would those members who wish to ask a question press the request to speak, Martins, please. And I call on Peter Chapman. 
I thank you, Presiding Officer, and I declare an interest as a partner in the farming business. And I would like to thank the Cab Secretary for prior sight of his statement. We all agree in this chamber that this EU convergence fund should have come in its entirety to Scottish agriculture. There has always been cross-party support for this stance. The Cabinet Secretary recognises many of the organisations who have made the argument, but he neglects to mention the 12 new Scottish Conservative MPs elected last year, who also have been working hard to achieve a successful result. The Prime Minister has promised to deliver this fund to Scotland, and we will hold him to account on this promise. But, given the complete lack of planning by this government for future agricultural support, when this money is delivered, how does the Cabinet Secretary propose to spend it? And let me say, it will not be acceptable to spend this money on any one sector of Scottish agriculture. It must be delivered right across all sectors, and not just used to plug a hole in LFAS payments created by this government's inability to plan ahead. Can the Cabinet Secretary promise he won't use it to do just that? Fergus uh, Well, um, I think I did discern that support there for the campaign. Um, in a just, it was a positive start, uh, and therefore I welcome that. And I, I welcome that, that uh, politicians, elected representatives from Scotland, have supported this campaign. And, you know, in all seriousness, I do think that when we can act together, that helps deliver results. I hope that will be the case on this occasion. And that's why I'm approaching the debate in this way. So, as, to, as to the disbursement of the money, let me just make one thing clear. If I promise to you, presiding officer, the check is in the post, your reaction, I suspect, may well be one of scepticism. <laughs> the check is not only not in the post, it's not yet signed. And therefore, and it's not written indeed. Uh, so therefore, it is really premature to start spending money we haven't got. Uh, I think that's a, a pretty solid message that every farmer in Scotland would understand. However, I've already given the absolute assurance that Mr. Mackay, uh, who I've consulted on this during, uh, in the formal way that is absolutely appropriate in government, he has confirmed that this money will be used and used solely for Scottish agriculture. And I think that that uh, assurance, which I've announced today, is very welcome. Uh, lastly, uh, Mr. Chapman used the phrase, plug the hole in LFAS funding. That's not correct. There's no hole in LFAS funding. The problem is that the rules which attach to LFAS mean uh, that the payments may have to go from 100 to 80 percent uh, next year. Uh, and that is something about which I've indicated previously my determination to do what I can to maintain income for hard-pressed farmers, our hill farmers, Elfast farmers, who I think uh, uh, perhaps are those who need it most. And I fully intend to make good that promise. It would help, presiding officer, if the UK can make good its promise, and that would uh, allow us to uh, provide a real boost to agriculture, I think, at these challenging times. Colin Smith. President Officer, and can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Labour fully supports all efforts to end the convergence fund in injustice and give Scotland's farmers what frankly is rightly theirs. We should remember that it was as a result of Scotland's low cap support payment per hectare that the UK was awarded the convergence uplift in the first place. And we urge the UK Government to set a date for the publication of the view review as a matter of urgency. The Cabinet Secretary, however, will know that those who receive the lowest level of support are Scotland's hill farmers and crofters. So will he ensure that these funds will be used for convergence and that means hill farming and crofting will be prioritised in any allocation of support in the future? Fergus Ewing. Well, again, I, I do welcome support from Colin Smith and the Labour Party. I genuinely welcome it. And uh, across the chamber, I, I, th I hope and I expect that that will be the case. And I think, you know, let's, let's be quite clear about this. If we argue amongst ourselves all the time, it makes it more difficult to achieve things for Scotland. What gets me up in the morning is doing good for Scotland. And in this case, uh, righting a wrong which has existed for six long years, presiding officer. I think Colin Smith makes a very good point that many of those who are in the greatest need are those who are f farming in our marginal uplands, our hill farms, and our island areas. Uh, and it's right, therefore, that they should benefit from this 
convergence monies if indeed the promise is implemented by the Prime Minister. So I think we agree in principle that that's the case, uh, but uh, forgive me, Presiding Officer, I want to see the colour of money in the bank account before we announce decisions about how to spend it. We'll move on to open questions, and if we have succinct questions and answers, we should get through them all. Emma Harper to be followed by Edward Mountain. Thank you. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his continued pursuit of this convergence monies issue. Can you explain a wee bit more about what the Bureau Review was set up to do, and will he join me in calling for the Secretary of State for Scotland to urge his Cabinet colleagues to right this wrong? Fergus Ewing. Well, the terms of the reference of the Bureau Review uh, were um, originally to look at why it was the case that the uh, 223 million euros was not applied to Scottish farmers as was intended by the EU. Uh, and indeed, that was the intention of uh, Michael Gove, as uh, discussed in uh, the 6th of November 2017 and discussed again in February 2018. Uh, however, the Treasury appear to have intervened and altered the terms of reference. So instead of looking at what happened and why it happened and why UK gov government ministers took the decision that they did not to provide this money to Scottish farmers and what advice was given to UK ministers. Instead of that, the Bureau Review's remit was solely to look at the, the forward two years and the convergence monies that are expected to be available for those two years. So whilst we welcome that limited remit, it doesn't really implement the promise that Owen Paterson first made uh, six years ago. Edward Mountain, followed by Stuart Stevens. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I refer members to my register of interest. In a rare moment of agreement with you, Cabinet Secretary, I agree with you the convergent money should have come to Scotland, and they will. Will the Cabinet Secretary therefore please guarantee to the farmers that were disadvantaged by this historic injustice that they will be top of the list when it comes to making sure that the situation is righted? Fergus Ewing. Well, again, I, I do welcome that statement from Mr. Mountain and, and all members who are supporting this case and it being followed through and payment being made. And, and I too hope and I expect that payment will be made. And this is, this is very serious. It's a real opportunity, I think, and it's one that I intend to make the most of. In direct response to this question, yes, I, I think that uh, those who, whose uh, land was such that they were farming land which uh, was of the low average per hectare are those who should be included in those who are entitled to benefit from the convergence money plainly. Uh, and there's a lot of solid work that will need to be done to make sure that we do just that. And I do also think, presenting officer, that these are, as Mr. Smith has said, amongst the people that, who need help most. And I met many of them, for example, at the La Harbour show just a couple of weeks ago with my colleague, uh, Kate Forbes. And they are having a tough time, a tough time, as are farmers throughout uh, parts of Scotland where farming is a tough, tough uh, existence and job. So I'm determined that they should benefit from this convergence money once, of course, it's in our bank. Stuart Stevenson, followed by Rhoda Grant. Uh, can I welcome the comments from the Conservative members that uh, indicate the money would come to Scotland? But does the Cabinet Secretary share my concerns that the decision-making power as to how it may be distributed might be retained at Westminster? And I say that in the light of remarks from the new Secretary of State for Scotland about their taking control over spending money in Scotland. Is it simply a new minister being naive or is he being mendacious? Fair um, I, I don't think I'm really going to stray into talking about mendacity today, a uh, presiding officer you may be pleased to hear. Um, but I do have some concerns. That there have been suggestions, a number, and I won't go into them all, there's not enough time, that there may, be, there may have been or may still be some intention to try to attach strings about how these funding, these, this money is deployed should it be repatriated. Uh, that would be entirely wrong. It would be a breach of devolution it would be a predation of our powers uh, and we would not uh, be willing to accept such conditions. I hope that reason will prevail, however, and that will not be the case. And I hope I've also indicated, finally, presiding officer, clearly, that I think there is a reasonable uh, common ground about the main thrust about how the lion's share of the funding 
should be deployed. Rhoda Grant, followed by John Finney. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I too support efforts to get those convergence funds back to Scotland. And also the Cabinet Secretary's indication that it will be directed to those in most disadvantaged areas. Can I ask if the CAP IT system would be able to distribute these funds, especially if they're to be distributed to those most in need? Fergus Ewing. Um, yes, I'm, conf I'm confident that the CAP system and the operation of it would not be an obstacle to distribution of funds. What I should say is that these are funds which were intended to have been distributed over the period 214 to 220, over that uh, seven year period. It wasn't intended that the money be distributed from 2019 onward. And therefore we have to be very careful in examining the strictures of the CAP system in terms of state aid uh, and in particular and the de minimis rule. And we have to weigh up all of that very carefully. But of course the EU did intend that those who most needed this money should get it, and therefore I'm hopeful and confident that we'll be able to find a way so to do. John Finney, followed by Mike Rumbles. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, I commend you and your predecessors' efforts on this, and I roundly condemn the UK, duplicitous UK government, for their, their uh, treatment of this. You talked to in, uh, in your statement, Andrew, and replying about doing good and need, Cabinet Secretary, and you said that money would be directed to agriculture. Is there an opportunity to do good and uh, address need by directing some of it to the Crofting Housing Grant Scheme, please. Fergus Ewing. Um, well, the, the Crofting Housing Grant Scheme is, is pretty much separate, really, from this. I hadn't thought of that. I mean, obviously, I'm happy to consider any suggestions I get, including from Mr. Finney, if he wants to write to me on this. Um, I would say that, from, from memory, the Crofting House Grant Scheme has... Uh, uh, the Crofting uh, Grant Scheme has uh, been extremely helpful to enable us to help several hundred of uh, crofters throughout the mainland highlands and particularly in the Western Isles, Dr. Allen's constituency. And I have been a forthright advocate uh, uh, and a determined uh, deliverer of funding to do just that. But it is an interesting point and I'll consider it. But I tend to think my first reaction is it's not quite what the convergence mon money was intended for. Mike Rumbles, followed by Alistair Allen. I agree that these funds should be due to Scottish farmers and crofters, but the varied statements of our Prime Minister on so many varied issues might not be so very sound. So having asked for Lord Bew's review, and the review having reached its conclusions, will the Scottish Government accept its findings when they are published, and does he expect the Prime Minister to accept them too? Fergus Ewing. Um, well, I'm, I'm hopeful, Presiding Officer, that uh, the findings will be, um, uh, will be admirable findings and the ones that we can support. I did have the opportunity to give evidence to uh, Lord Bew and uh, thought that it was a very, uh, uh, the, the response I had from him and his team was very positive. I got the impression they understood the arguments and actually I got the impression that perhaps there was a tacit acceptance that the arguments, which are not very complicated, were actually accepted. So I am hopeful of the results. I don't think I can say in advance that we accept conclusions of a report that has not yet been delivered. But I'm hopeful that the Prime Minister, who's made one of the most unequivocal promises I have ever seen in 20 years in politics, will make good that promise. Uh, and I hope and expect that that will happen, and sooner rather than later. Alistair Allen. The issue of convergence funding is of course not made any easier or fairer uh, as the prospect of a no-deal Brexit draws closer with potentially disastrous consequences for sheep and beef producers uh, in the Western Isles. Beyond the very welcome loan scheme that is now underway, what else can now be done to provide some much needed financial clarity for farmers and crofters as they make their plans for the future? Fergus Ewing. Well, the, the position is that uh, on the loan scheme, signing officer in respect of the Pillar 1 payments, uh, at this time we have issued 15,570 offers worth 394 million euros. This is entirely separate from convergence. Uh, uh, and that is 95% of the eligible population. And after the first week, over 7,500 loan offers have been returned. And I would urge all farmers and crofters in Dr. Allen's constituency to return their offer as quickly as is possible. If they do so, 
the intention is and my expectation is that we will deliver payments of nearly 400 million euros if everybody accepts their offers within uh, a, as early a period as possible starting the first week in October. And I'd really like to praise the team of officials in ARPID that have been administering this scheme. It's very complicated. They've done it now for a few years. This is money that farmers and crofters will receive before Halloween, before 31st October, before the possibility of a no-deal Brexit. And it's money that will go into the rural economy to pay bills, to pay bills of feed merchants, contractors, uh, other, other supply chain in the agriculture sector. So this is a very, very important piece of work. And it's probably the main practical thing that we're doing to prepare to mitigate as far as we can the consequences of a no-deal Brexit. That concludes questions on the Ministerial Statement on Repatriation of Convergence Funds owed to Scottish Farming. Apologies to Donald Cameron, David Torrance, Alex Rowley and Richard Lyle for being unable to take their questions. And we will move on to the next item of business. And the next item of business is consideration of two Parliamentary Bureau motions. Could I ask Graham Day on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau to move motions 18641 on committee membership and 18642 on substitutions on committees? Move, presiding officer. Thank you very much. Thank you. And this question, the questions on these two motions will be put at decision time, to which we now come. Uh, and I propose to ask a single question. Does any member object? No, that's good. So the question is that motions 18641 and 18642 in the name of Graham Day on behalf of the Bureau be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed, and that concludes decision time. We're going to move on shortly to members' business in the name of Claudia Beamish on towards an independent Palestinian state. We're just going to take a few moments for members and the Minister to change seats. A few moments. <laughs> 